Finally, all remaining goat-like ones will perish by means of the angelic forces at Armageddon. But as for the sheep-like ones, the fine shepherd Jesus will know each one of them before the start of the Great Tribulation, and he will observe their loyalty to Jehovah throughout the Great Tribulation. Then, just before Armageddon begins, Jesus will, in effect, sit down as judge to make the final distinction between the sheep and the goats out of all people then living. Notably, in this third parable, Jesus said that those who are at that time judged as goats will call him Lord, but Jesus will make it clear that they did not support his brothers. So then, any persons who were once sheep-like, but who failed to endure to the end by courageously supporting Christ's brothers, will be placed among the goats. Referring to Jesus as Lord will not save them. It will be too late to do good for Christ's brothers, who will likely be with Jesus in the heavenly kingdom by that time. Of course, the goats will also include those enemies of God who are still alive out of all the nations. This final judging serves an important purpose. What is it? It will leave no doubt in the eyes of all then living as to who Jesus' righteous sheep are as they prepare to enter the new world. So then strive to keep standing among the righteous who will be placed at Jesus' right hand. God's word promises that as long as sheep-like ones remain loyal to him and to his appointed King Jesus, they will be guided into everlasting life. Such ones must display courage by supporting the work of Christ's brothers, both now and during the Great Tribulation. I routinely get comments on my YouTube channel and elsewhere on social media, on Twitter. I hear from not just believing Jehovah's Witnesses who stumble on my channel, but also Jehovah's Witness apologists who reinvent the teaching about Armageddon to suit them, to make it more palatable. So when I say that the Jehovah's Witness religion teaches that only believers get to survive Armageddon and everyone else who isn't part of the religion will be destroyed, they say, oh, no, no, it's not as simple as that. Jehovah is going to do the judging. He can read people's hearts. It's not as black and white as saying that. Only in the future will we see how things pan out and how Jehovah judges and who makes it through. It's all going to be about the heart condition. If you have a good heart condition, you'll be okay when Armageddon comes. Well, I would ask those who are minded that way to just reflect on not just what we've just heard, but what we will hear next. Kenneth Cook's words are blowing this whole idea completely out of the water. And this is what the religion has been all along. It's always been the teaching that if you are a Jehovah's Witness, you're a sheep like one. You're going to survive when Armageddon strikes. If you're not a Jehovah's Witness, you're a goat-like one and you deserve to die. And we're hearing it here. Kenneth Cook says, But as for the sheep-like ones, the fine shepherd Jesus will know each one of them before the start of the Great Tribulation, and he will observe their loyalty to Jehovah throughout the Great Tribulation. So already we're learning that in order to be sheep-like, and by the way, this is a binary thing. <laughs> it's not like there's goat-like and sheep-like and something in the middle that's still going to be okay. No, no, you're either an enemy of God, a goat-like one, or you are loyal to Jehovah, which is what Kenneth Cook has just said there. Loyalty to Jehovah gets you sheep-like status, gets you survival of Armageddon. Speaking of goat-like ones who have been judged at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, once the Great Tribulation begins, 
that's it. Everything's been decided. You can't switch from being a goat-like one to a sheep-like one. Kenneth Cook says, It will be too late to do good for Christ's brothers, who will likely be with Jesus in the heavenly kingdom by that time. Being a sheep-like one involves doing good for Christ's brothers, who are Christ's brothers, the anointed ones, who are the most visible anointed ones, the governing body, how do we do good for Christ's brothers? We listen to whatever the governing body has to tell us. And then later on, Kenneth Cook says, God's word promises that as long as sheep-like ones remain loyal to him and to his appointed King Jesus, they will be guided into everlasting life. Such ones must display courage by supporting the work of Christ's brothers, both now and during the Great Tribulation. Again, the key to survival, the key to being judged as sheep-like when the Great Tribulation begins, hinges on whether you are supporting Christ's brothers, in other words, doing whatever Kenneth Cook and the rest of his pals on the governing body say. So in summary, Jesus is now observing the actions, attitudes, and speech of all people. As a thorough judge, he will have identified sheep-like ones and goat-like ones by the start of the Great Tribulation. Then, according to Jesus' parable, just before Armageddon begins, Jesus will pass final judgment on all then living on earth, giving attention to why the righteous sheep are placed at his right hand. Will you be found standing among the righteous? To receive that blessing, don't be swayed by the things you see taking place around you in this world. Don't be swayed by popular protests. Remain neutral, no part of it. Don't be swayed by political promises. Remain neutral, no part of it. Don't be swayed as governments say peace and security. Remain neutral, no part of it. But when it comes to obeying God's laws, stand firmly on the side of the kingdom. Only those who remain no part of the world will be viewed by Jesus as being sheep-like when the Great Tribulation begins and when it wraps up at Armageddon. And only those who continue to support Jesus' brothers will be placed at Jesus' right hand when he makes the final judgment of the righteous sheep and the cursed goats. Show where you desire to stand in all that you say and do right now. And during the time yet remaining, get ready to use our new publication, Enjoy Life Forever, and help many more take a righteous stand before the end comes. Thank you, Brother Cook, for making clear that what a person does now to support Jehovah's arrangement is crucial in Christ's final judgment of the sheep and goats just before Armageddon. May all of us choose to support true worship now and on through the great tribulation yet to come. Again, I want to drag you back to this claim made by apologists and made by some Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, don't be so dramatic. We're not a doomsday group. We don't teach that everyone who isn't in our religion deserves to die. Really? Can you really say that after what we've just heard? And don't get me wrong, I prefer your religion... <laughs> I prefer your apostate interpretation of what the Jehovah's Witness religion is. But here on the Lloyd Evans channel, I'm not here to talk about your personal interpretation of the Jehovah's Witness religion, which is different and therefore apostate. I'm here to talk about what the official teachings are. And we've just heard explained clearly and transparently what's involved in surviving Armageddon. We hear there, just towards the end, Tony Morris say, May all of us choose to support true worship now and on through the great tribulation yet to come. There's a big clue <laughs> that surviving Armageddon 
involves supporting true worship. If you're not supporting true worship, you won't be surviving Armageddon. But let's dip back into Kenneth Cook's rousing finale to his grand unveiling of New Light on the Sheep and Goats teaching. He gives us two sentences beginning with only those. He says, Only those who remain no part of the world will be viewed by Jesus as being sheep-like when the Great Tribulation begins and when it wraps up at Armageddon. So again, if you're one of these apologists or if you have created this watered-down version of the religion that you're trying to push as being the official narrative, you might be tempted to say, oh, well, this is saying that as long as you're no part of the world, you're going to survive Armageddon. That's all this is about. Jeez, calm down. <laughs> as long as you remain politically neutral, as long as you're no part of the world, you're a sheep-like one. Congratulations, you've made it. First of all, that's not all Kenneth Cook says. We're going to come to the next sentence. Second of all, has the organization itself remained politically neutral? If you're watching this video as a Jehovah's Witness who's recently stumbled on my channel, I would invite you to watch this video on the United Nations scandal. It was found out in 2001 that Watchtower had been signed up as an NGO, non-governmental organization member of the United Nations for nine years, beginning in 1992. And they only got out of that arrangement when it got exposed in the media. So that was a very shady business, and it could be argued extremely hypocritical given this idea that you're not supposed to be any part of Satan's political system. And specifically when it comes to the United Nations, Jehovah's Witnesses are very scathing when it comes to the role of the United Nations in Bible prophecy. But moving on in Kenneth Cook's talk, there's a second sentence beginning only those, he says, And only those who continue to support Jesus' brothers will be placed at Jesus' right hand when he makes the final judgment of the righteous sheep and the cursed goats. Only those who support Jesus' brothers. Well, now we've narrowed things down <laughs> considerably. We're not just talking about those who don't have anything to do with Satan's system of things, people who are apolitical, and you don't have to be a Jehovah's Witness to be apolitical, to have no real opinion on what's going on in Satan's system of things, in the political system of things. We've now created this extremely exclusive caveat that you're only going to survive Armageddon if you support Jesus brothers. Jesus brothers being the anointed and the most visible members of the anointed, having self-certified themselves, by the way, as anointed ones. No one gets to check <laughs> whether they really are among the 144,000 who rule as kings and priests with Christ in heaven. They've reached that conclusion themselves. But the most visible anointed ones or the most visible of Jesus' brothers who can be supported in any way, shape, or form are the eight dudes who meet at their lakeside compound every Wednesday in upstate New York and organize and manage the lives of eight and a half million Jehovah's Witnesses. Who else? Who else can be supported? in this only those statement that Kenneth Cook has just made. You have to be a Jehovah's Witness. You have to be supporting the governing body and acknowledging their authority over you, over your life. That's the only way, according to Kenneth Cook, who conveniently is one of these men, 
that's the only way that you get to dodge the fireballs when Armageddon comes. And just to re-emphasize this, because I want to use this video whenever the next apologist surfaces, saying, oh, don't be so dramatic. <laughs> I want to make this the definitive video that I use to just debunk this whole idea. Go to the October 2019 Watchtower, pages 11 and 12. I've quoted this before. It says, we need to help people understand how important it is for them to take their stand for Jehovah and his kingdom. This means trying to motivate people to make the truth their own by applying what they learn, dedicating their life to Jehovah and getting baptized. Only then will they survive Jehovah's day. Believe me, I get it. I've been there. I think I was one of those Jehovah's Witnesses who struggled with this idea that my beliefs required me to think of everyone who didn't agree with my religion being worthy of destruction. I found ways of squaring the circle. I found ways of making excuses and thinking, oh, it's all going to be about someone's heart condition. That's what's going to matter when Armageddon comes. God's not going to just kill all non-Jehovah's Witnesses. It can't be that black and white. It's got to be more nuanced than that. And you create your own version of the religion that's more palatable than your religion and just assume in the back of your mind that your version is the correct one and not the religion. But it's there in black and white, and it's there in Kenneth Cook's talk. If you want to be a sheep-like one, if you want to be judged favorably, if you want to avoid annihilation along with seven and a half billion men, women, and children who don't acknowledge the authority of Kenneth Cook and his pals, you'd better get your butt in gear and support Jesus Brothers, the governing body, and specifically, according to this Watchtower magazine, you need to get yourself baptized. That's the only way you're going to survive Jehovah's Day. That's the only way you're going to make it through the greatest act of genocide the world will ever have seen. Follow the governing body. Do whatever they ask you to do.